Hi, my name is Jason Lynch and welcome to my stop motion animation armature video presentation. In this video, I'm hoping to give you some tips and tricks that I've used over the years in making budget armatures for stop motion animation. So I'm going to be using equipment that you won't find in a professional's lab or you might find them in a professional space, but um, I'll be using common tools, common stock and uh, bits and pieces you can buy at most hardware stores. There will be a few specialised pieces, but we'll talk about those when we get to them. So let's make a start. So the tools that we're going to be using, you'll need a file, a range of pliers. I'm using a bench grinder, but you can use a normal hand file if that's all you have. We'll be using a bunch of Allen keys. And I'll be using a drill press, but if you have a hand drill, that'll do just fine. You need a range of drill bits. And I've got a piece of hardwood that I'm going to be drilling into. I've also got a range of vices. I have a timber vise. I've got a nice solid steel vise. And I've got a mobile vise. I've also got a couple of uh, homemade jigs that I've put inside of my vise. Some of the stock that we'll be using. Just normal 3mm and 2mm uh, metric thread bolts. Some screws and a few bits and pieces. Slingshot bearings. So we start off by measuring out our armature pieces. Character Hopefully we've already done our character design and know what sort of movement the character needs to do. So we make out using our mild steel key steel. Mark out all the holes with a steel punch and then clean all of the markings off of that stock ready for drilling. As a general rule, each of the plates has three holes in it Two of them will um, seat the bearings and then they'll be on the outsides and then the middle hole will be where the bolt goes through to pull those uh, those two plates together like a sandwich. So here I'm just making a, a few different marks to say this particular hole is going to be a threaded hole, this hole is going to be just a guide hole and this hole is going to be a seat for a bearing later on. So here I'm just drilling through with a guide bit. This is a 2.5mm bit and this will end up being the centre hole that requires tapping. So I'll tap for a 3mm thread later on and we'll show you that later on. But um, it also serves as a really good guide size for the other holes that you need to drill out. Some will be 3mm and some will be up to 5mm. Once I've drilled all those holes, I'll um, cut these to size. And these plates that I'm making here will be for shoulders and uh, feet. So I'm having three holes there. Two holes, the two outside holes are going to be where the bearing sits. And the middle hole obviously will have a screw going through it. And one of the screws on one side will be the three mil hole. And that's where the, the actual screw will go straight through. And on the, the piece on the other side is going to be 2.5 mil hole and the reason for that is because I'll be tapping a thread through that later on. So I just keep going ahead and trimming these off until I've got a nice little bucket full of metal. So the whole time here probably one of the important things while we're watching this boring cutting of steel is that I've got, um, you can probably see that there's chunks of metal flying off. I've got a pair of safety goggles on and if I was using any power tools I'll make sure I've got my ear goggles on as well. Um, if you do it once or twice it's not too bad, but once you're doing it for a day, eight hours of having this grinder going is a bit noisy and you end up with ringing in your ears by the end of it. So now I'm using a good pair of adjustable pliers that I guess you could pick up at any hardware store and just very lightly shaping the end of that piece that I've already drilled out. So I just keep going through and as you saw earlier we cut off a lot of pieces of steel so this this part can take a while but it's probably one of the more fun parts because you, see, you get to see some really good results pretty quickly. When you're shaping the ends of these I guess you've got to be aware of how far the joint needs to bend and if this were a shoulder joint you don't want to be bending this and have a pointy end come out of the plasticine or if you're using silicon you don't want it coming out of the silicon so you round them off as close as you can to the the hole that you've drilled. The other thing to keep in mind is that these get very hot because that um, sharpening grinding stone is spinning pretty quickly and it heats right up. 
if you're interested you can have a little bucket of cold water if you're in a hurry otherwise I just have a like a ceramic tile laying by nearby where I drop those onto so that I don't number one burn my fingers trying to pick them up but if I'm using a, a nice surface which my bench isn't but if I was I'm not risking any fires or anything by dumping those onto a piece of wood so we just continue on with grinding these until we get the right shape and so rather than making just one joint at a time so doing one piece then the next piece then the next I prefer to cut a bulk of them and then just pretty much work like an assembly line. I'll do one section then I'll do the next section and move all the way through. So I guess the other thing that's important because you're going to be standing there for about three or four hours is to keep a good posture and make sure that you're not in some awkward position that's going to be uncomfortable for you tomorrow. So here's an example of one that has been drilled out and ground and one that hasn't been ground. So if you don't have a bench grinder, I mean they can cost anywhere from $30 to $200. You can do this all by hand, but if you imagine that you've got approximately 12 joints per character, grinding one of these can take about 10 minutes by hand so you're going to need a decent file you're going to need so now we're going to move on to making the body block so the part that the the rods will bolt into in this video I'm using uh, silver key steel which is a nickel plated steel it's a bit harder than brass in the final puppet that you'll see I've actually reverted back to brass it's much easier to work with it's a softer metal easy to cut and shape and it's much easier to tap a thread into. I found when I was using this nickel key steel I snapped a lot of um, of my tap bits which generally cost about $20 a piece. So I was just punching a, a starting hole or a little marking for the drill to grab onto. With this shiny steel you find that with a small drill bit they tend to wander and snap quite easily so um, giving it a centre punch before you start is a good way to start. So this part here is using an Armaverse armature plate that I bought off the internet. So it was pre-made with all the holes beautifully lined up from a machine. But I found that it needed a thread. Uh, it was just pretty useless with a nut and bolt assembly. So now we're going to tap some threads into these. And the, the beauty of having a, a tapped thread means that you don't have a little nut sitting out the back side of the the plate and you can just screw straight into that plate you got less bits of metal poking out the side of your puppet's arm or leg so I've got an M3 tap here um, spend a bit more money and buy a good quality one because the cheap and nasty ones you buy is a set of three for eight dollars they'll break in about two two threaded jobs this one here that we're using in the video has uh, I've done about 40 holes on it still nice and sharp I've just painted the hole with CRC or RP7 or any of those sort of things and all that does it sort of helps that um, that cutting thing to to slide through and cut nicely and you notice I spend more time at the start and making sure that that hole is nice and straight before we we go ahead and tap a thread you might get the most beautiful beautifully sculpted piece of plate but if you get a crooked hole the joints not going to line up so I spend more time at the start making sure that that's straight which is like watching grass grow when you're watching it on video however we've sped the video up so that we can jump ahead to threading it so when you're threading it uh, tapping a thread you usually go about three quarters of a turn and then cut back a half a turn the reason you're doing that is because you're kicking out any of the off cuts that you're cutting out of that steel once it starts to flow freely which is usually once you're about halfway through you just keep winding through and wind all the way back out again just to make sure that that threads nice and clean normally what I like to do at the end of that I've got a, a high pressure air thing so I'll go ahead and um, shoot that with some high pressure air just to make sure that that's nice and clean doesn't have any old burrs of metal in there so here I'm going to try and take the other side of the plate which will house the head of the bolt and countersink it so that it's deep enough so that the head of the, the screw or the bolt doesn't stick out of the plate. So I'm just using a normal cord, 
cordless drill, thirty dollar drill, and I'm matching the um, the shape of the end of the drill with the screw head. Drop it in until you're pretty comfortable that that's as far as you're going to get. If you go too far, you'll find that that will start to bend when you tighten it up. So we're going to move on to cutting the rods now. So the rods, you know, once you've measured them up and made sure you got the right size, I've once again cut up a bunch of them and have them ready because once you get the tools all going, you want to just have a bit of a sheltered workshop and keep working through those. So get those done. With these, I'm, I'm not too fussed about leaving a burr on the end. And the reason I don't mind leaving a burr on the end is that when we start soldering those together, uh, it gives the solder something a bit better to grip to. So I don't use any lubricants on these because it won't stick. Here I'm cutting some silver solder using a $30 torch that I bought from the local hardware store. Put a bit of the silver solder inside a pre-drilled ball. You can drill, the, you can drill your own balls, that doesn't sound very nice. But anyway, you can drill a hole in the balls. Um, now when you're working with a flame, I'm just using a pretty standard flame. It's not, it's not a, um, an oxy flame, it's just a LPG flame. And you'll notice in that picture there that you can see there's a bright blue flame and there's a where it goes transparent and what you want to do is you find the point where the brighter blue flame ends that's the hottest point of your flame and you just keep waving your flame across the ball until it turns red hot once it hits red hot which it's starting to look like a nice cherry now that solder will melt and the ball will drop It's going to take about three or four seconds to harden enough so it won't just fall out. So leave it for a second. Once it's cooled down, because these are super duper hot, so I just um, do a whole run of them and then start to polish them off. When you do heat these pieces up, they get a, like a, a horrible black type of residue on them. So I'll put a bit of a, a polishing compound on this wheel. So I've changed the wheel of that... Um, bench grinder into a polishing wheel which is just a bunch of cloth stitched together it cost me about ten dollars at the hardware store and a bit of cutting compound that came with it and you just keep working it and yeah this does get hot but nowhere near as hot as it did before once you're happy that it's nice and shiny and you've got all your pieces ready we can assemble those and see how they fit together after all of this work so now that we've got all the pieces that we need to make an armature or at least the plates and the balls, we can um, try and assemble those. The trick here is to try and get them together. Uh, we've got all the parts and it's just like big kids Meccano from here on in. Tensioning it is up to what the character needs to do, so I'll let you guys figure that out. However, one tip that I will give you is make some sort of a note, whether it be on a piece of paper, drawing of your puppet, as to where the, um, the heads of the nuts sit so that when you need to tighten them during a shot or whatever, you don't have to go cutting through fabric where you're not going to find anything going on a treasure hunt. So now we're going to do a quick demo of how you would create something in wire. So for example in this one I'm going to make some hands for the character and I'm just getting some armature wire which is an aluminium wire so you wouldn't ever use coat hanger wire or anything because it has too much of a spring. With the aluminium wire it tends to hold its position. Find a a tool in this case I've just got a screwdriver without the end in it and poke it through a loop of wire put it in your power drill and very slowly wind the drill until it starts to wind on itself once you're happy that it's reached a nice level you just take your screwdriver out unscrew that and trim it to length and pop it into your puppet or cast your hand and then pop it into your puppet. So that is how you can make a ball and socket armature using reasonably common power tools and hand tools that you might have lying around under the house or if you needed to go out and purchase a bunch of tools rather than buying a $3,000 lathe and a $2,000 mill you can get away with it for about $200 worth of hand tools and, and cheap power tools. Thanks a lot for taking the time to watch my video and I hope it helps at least one person out there but if you can leave some comments and some feedback that'd be great. I might even make some more if people actually watch this. Bye!